Reverse culture shock. If you have been an expat living overseas and have repatriated back to your home country, then you definitely know about reverse culture shock. That's right guys, today I'm gonna to be talking about reverse culture shock and how I have experienced that now that I've been home for about three months back in Texas after I've lived overseas for the past seven years. But before we get into it, be sure you go down below, hit that like button because I know you're going to learn something new and also that subscribe button. I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers by my birthday, which is July 1st. And I think we still have about 620 ish subscribers to go. So every subscriber really helps. All right, guys, today we're going to be talking about more of the repatriation side of expat life because that's what I'm currently going through. And I want to talk to you about what reverse culture shock is and how you may experience it when you are finished with your expat life and also how I have personally experienced it now that I've been home for a few months living in Texas. And be sure to stick around till the end of the video because the last way that reverse culture shock has manifested for me is a biggie. And it's one that I think a lot of you will have trouble with as well. And it's something that I am still processing almost four months back from living in Argentina and Angola. So the question, are you happy to be home, is one that I get asked quite often, or I have been getting that question the past few months. And it's hard to truthfully answer, especially if that person hasn't been an expat before. I feel like they want me to be happy and excited to finally be home back in Texas. Um, but the truth is that I also consider Angola my home, I consider Argentina my home, so really I feel like I am back home here in Texas, but at the same time it feels like it's just one of my homes now. Before we left Argentina back in December, our company gave us what they called a repatriation orientation. So we spoke to someone in the HR department, it was about an hour long meeting via Zoom, and she told us a little bit about reverse culture shock and repatriation and kind of the feelings and emotions or the thoughts that we could expect when we moved home. And she said that would probably last for at least six months. Um, she equated it kind of like when you go on overseas assignment or you go overseas as an expat, how it normally takes you a few months, four, six, maybe even a year to really get adjusted to your new country and what life is like there and the customs and everything, the language. Um, she said it would be very similar to that same process, but going back home. And I definitely have found now that we've been back for three to four months that the repatriating has been more difficult than I thought it was going to be, even though I was warned. It's definitely been a roller coaster of emotions since we got off that plane in December. And I just try to keep reminding myself whenever I'm having a hard day um, with repatriation, reverse culture shock, that that's exactly what this is. It's going to take time. The only thing that I can do is keep moving through and just give it time to kind of play out. And I will definitely, just like the other countries I've lived in, I will become more adjusted to living here in Texas and my days will start to feel more normal. So I try to just remind myself of that and give myself some grace. So I have a definition here of reverse culture shock in case you're not familiar with it. And I'm gonna read it off because it's a little bit long. It is the emotional and psychological distress suffered by some people when they return home after a number of years overseas. This can result in unexpected difficulty in adjusting to the culture and values of the home country now that the previously familiar has become unfamiliar. And it can definitely be hard to understand the effects that reverse culture shock can have on repatriates, especially if you haven't been an expat before. However, those of us that have been expats can definitely understand and we will probably struggle with this whenever we end our expat life and move back home. Because when we end our life living abroad and we come back to our home country, things will definitely feel different because we've sort of gotten used to a new way of living. And it can definitely take time to get readjusted to the life um, that you have back in your home country. And it could also be the fact that you may have remembered home differently uh, it might be that while you were overseas as an expat, you sort of idealized your home country a little bit more than 
um, maybe what you should have. I definitely have fallen prey to this at times where I'll think, you know, I'll be in Argentina and I'll be frustrated with something and I'll say, oh, if only we were back home or I missed home or we didn't do this back in Texas. And now that I'm back, I definitely have found that I may have idealized living in Texas. So now that we have talked a little bit about what reverse culture shock is, I've given you a nice definition and kind of explained it a little bit more thoroughly from um, my point of view as a repatriate back in Texas after living overseas for seven years, I want to share with you how I have noticed reverse culture shock the past couple months in my life. So the first way I have noticed reverse culture shock is through English, which is kind of random, but for the past seven years, I have lived in countries where the majority of people did not speak English, and that does include Buenos Aires. Um, in fact, there were very few people, even in BA, that spoke English. So I always felt like when I did speak English um, and somebody would hear me, they would quickly look over, and I always felt like, oh, my cover's blown, you know, now they know I'm not from here. And it's just been kind of weird to get used to the fact that everyone speaks English around me. Um, everyone knows what I'm saying all the time. There's no struggle in communicating. You know, I just can speak my native tongue and everyone around me understands. And it might sound kind of weird that that feels weird to me, but it's just something um, that I haven't had for seven years. I've really struggled with communication for the past seven years of my life. And so it's just a little bit weird that communicating is just so easy now. I've also noticed reverse culture shock when I am grocery shopping or I am ordering something off of Amazon. For those of you that are familiar with Amazon, maybe live here in the US or some other countries. But for the past seven years, especially in Angola, but also in Argentina, um, the grocery stores haven't been for sure near as large as the American ones. And they haven't had near the options as what they have here, what we have here in America. Um, in Angola, you might go to the grocery store and there's literally two or three ketchup options. You just, you know, one of two, you have to pick one and take it home. And here, when you get to the ketchup aisle in Texas, I mean, literally rows and rows of ketchup, 30 plus options. Um, and so it can be very overwhelming, I guess. Uh, I also noticed this when I would come home on vacation because there'd be times I need to go to the grocery store or I would pick up some things to put my suitcase and take back with me overseas. And I do remember feeling extremely overwhelmed when I would go into an American grocery store and just seeing the sheer amount of products and not only products, but options for each product. You know, if you want yogurt, there's so many yogurts, 50, 60 yogurts to choose from. Um, overseas, you might just get two different brands to choose from. So. That's definitely something that I've noticed being back home. It's just been a little bit of a shock going grocery shopping. And the second way around shopping is through Amazon. Um, those of you that are American know very well that we can order something off Amazon and it normally arrives at our doorstep within 48 hours or less. And this to me feels so luxurious. Um, being overseas, I mean, we did have some services like that in Argentina. Um, not near as fast normally, and the quality was not on the same level. Uh, but it just feels like there's such a disparity between me sitting here in Texas, ordering something off of Amazon to get in my house, to come to my house in 48 hours, and the way people live in Angola, or quite frankly, the majority of the world. It almost, like I said, feels too luxurious and almost sometimes makes me feel guilty that I can get things, products sent to my house so easily. Um, and I know there's people, I have friends, you know, overseas that don't have that ability. So that big of a difference in things just feels, I feel very aware of it at times. And speaking of grocery shopping, <laughs> the third way that I have noticed some reverse culture shock in me coming home is in hoarding. Now, don't worry, I don't have a house full of things, as you can see behind me. <laughs> But I do tend to hoard when I go to grocery stores. Um, it is getting better, but I will tell you, especially when I lived in Angola, but also sometimes in Argentina, um, they wouldn't always have the products that I wanted to buy. And it could be something like almond milk or something literally so basic as eggs. There would be 
sometimes when I would go to the grocery store and they would not have any eggs and I have to go to another grocery store, there were no eggs. So I just have to wait 48 hours, go back to the store and get some eggs. Um, but it was different with more specialty products like almond milk, um, maybe some kinds of cheeses. So a little bit more luxurious products that they would need to ship in from South Africa. You never really knew when the truck or the boat was gonna get there. And so, so sometimes when they, well, all the time <laughs> with almond milk, if they had almond milk in the grocery store, I would take home, let's say eight cartons. Um, I did not need eight cartons, but I knew that would get me through a month in case they didn't get another shipment or another boatload until the next month or from two months from now, I would at least have, you know, my favorite kind of almond milk for several weeks. And here in the U.S., obviously, you don't really need to worry about products not being replenished. Um, I can go to the grocery store every day of the week and they're probably going to have the exact same things, you know, barring any crazy weather events or anything. So I've really had to remind myself when I'm shopping in the grocery stores, you know, pick up one thing of each food, you know, maybe two if it's for a recipe, but I don't need to bring home five cheddar cheeses or whatever the product is. And that's just something that I've had to remind myself when I'm grocery shopping um, that I don't need to hoard items. And Andrew, my husband also struggles with this. Sometimes when he'll go grocery shopping with me, you know, I might say, hey, grab that yogurt. And he'll say, how many do you want, three or four? And I'll tell him, nope, just one, we're back home. <laughs> Another way I have felt reverse culture shock um, play out in my life the last couple of months has been that I just really miss the daily challenges of expat life. I guess really my life feels almost too easy right now. And I'm, I know that m makes me sound incredibly blessed and I am incredibly blessed to have the life that I have. Um, but I just mean it more. I struggle with things every day and certain things feel hard and repatriation feels hard every day. Um, but I just mean that I don't have the same daily challenges that I had as an expat. For example, like I said earlier, communicating. You know, I lived for seven years where I couldn't just speak my mind and communicate or just order something easily. Or also trying to, you know, learn new things in a new culture. You know, why do people do this, this thing this way? Or why is this plumber not coming with tools? Like, why doesn't he bring his tool belt with him? Um, little things like that that kind of kept me on my toes, so to speak, and kind of added little spice to life, um, discovering new foods or discovering a new street or seeing a new word on a sign and I didn't know what it meant and needing to look it up. So I do miss that um, those little challenges or those little things that, you know, I like to say the spice, you know, it would sprinkle in and it would just make things hard sometimes or confusing and you have to figure it out. So I really miss those little challenges of expat life. And speaking of language, again, <laughs> Another way I've noticed some reverse culture shock is through um, the lack of Spanish in my area where I live. Obviously, I live in Texas and there is a lot of Spanish, um, but my specific um, kind of area that I live in, there's not a lot of Spanish spoken. And so it's just interesting where I feel like when I lived in Argentina, I tried to speak Spanish to fit in. And when if I say something in Spanish here, I stick out like a sore thumb. <laughs> So it's just interesting to see how language can be different in different areas and kind of mean different things as well. Um, at the same time, I'm getting sad because I feel like I'm losing a lot of my Spanish I'm because I'm not using it. Um, you know what they say, if you don't use it, you lose it. And I definitely feel myself losing some Spanish. So I, me and Andrew, we really both want to try and make a better effort to at least talk to each other, maybe go to um, some Spanish or Mexican restaurants and try to order more often in Spanish um, and maybe even watch more TV or at least TV with subtitles, Spanish subtitles as well, what we did in Argentina. So um, I miss the Spanish and I feel sad that it's kind of leaving me, but I definitely think that's just a matter of me needing to make more efforts to keeping Spanish um, under my belt. Another one has been that I feel, and I've kind of felt this way on expat assignment as well, but I've noticed it a little bit more now that I've been home. Um, and I feel bad saying this about my country, but it feels like Americans are really wasteful. And I, I mean, I'm sure you've probably maybe felt that way too about Americans. Um, I just feel like it's more evident now that I've lived 
in the different countries that I've lived and now I'm coming back to this first world country, um, I just noticed that people don't um, keep their things as long, maybe electronics or cars, you know, after a year you might upgrade a new, to a new cell phone or after five years you probably will get a new car versus in Argentina, I mean, I saw so many old cars on the road um, and old electronics in Angola as well. And they really just, it seems like people in different countries took better care of their items, um, tried to keep them for longer. And I also know a lot of that was they just couldn't afford to upgrade every year. Um, but it just feels wasteful that in the US, we just constantly are changing over and getting new things and upgrading and updating. And it just feels really wasteful. All right, guys, before I tell you my final way that I have noticed reverse culture shock now that I'm back in Texas, be sure to go below and hit that like button and also subscribe to the channel because I know you're going to love the expat content that's coming. Um, and I hope this one today has helped you as well. So the final way, well, I think there's so many other ways I think of every day, but <laughs> the final way that I'm going to discuss with you today is reconnecting. And this is a tough one. It's really personal for me. Um, I'm sure ex other expats feel this way as well, but it's kind of a hard one to talk about because it's very personal. Um, but what no one tells you really when you go on expat assignment is that, or you go overseas for to be an expat. I always say expat assignment because my husband and I moved overseas um, with his company on an expat assignment. Uh, but no one tells you that it almost feels like you're in a time bubble sometimes. You feel very isolated from the world. You know, you're, at least for us, we were in Angola for our first assignment. So much of it was just assimilating and making new friends and going to work each day because we both worked there. And, you know, at the, on the weekends, just kind of decompressing and doing travel around Africa. And so sometimes you can just feel, I don't know how to describe it, but that you're almost in this time bubble and you don't really forget, but, you know, your friends and your family are literally across the world you know, living their own life and they're having life changes. They're getting married, they're having children, um, they're moving into different homes, they're taking different jobs. And you keep up with them through social media for sure. And, you know, you talk to them, um, but it's not the same as kind of experiencing the same life as them. You're sort of experiencing a completely different life. And it can just feel um, a little disconnecting when you come back home and you just feel like you've kept up with each other in a way, but you just feel at the same time, I feel very disconnected also. So you can see why I said at the beginning, it's very personal for me and I don't really like talking about it because it's hard to really explain. Um, I think maybe people that have been expats would understand it a little bit more when you repatriate how this feels. But I feel like for anyone that hasn't been an expat, you know, if my, if my friends and family are watching this, um, it might sound, it might come across kind of weird, but it's just that it's just felt harder for me to kind of reconnect and just kind of come back into um, that social scene. I think some of it's also probably the pandemic. I mean, you know, I can't really see my friends. I can't um, actually go out and, you know, do things. So I think some of it is probably that mixed in as well. Um, it's just something for me to be aware of and kind of work through because I know it's just me repatriating and just sort of getting used to life back in Texas. So all of these things make me feel a little bit uncomfortable and some of them even make me feel a little guilty, but I definitely wanted to share with you guys just that way if you are currently an expat or you're considering going overseas as an expat once the pandemic is over, um, these are things to be aware of that might pop up or creep up for you when you do decide to repatriate back to your home country. So there have been some more serious, like the reconnecting, and then a little less serious, you know, with the hoarding at the grocery stores, that's a little bit easier to um, go through. But anytime I'm having a bad day with repatriation or it just feels hard or I'm feeling unhappy, um, which honestly is quite often lately, I try to remind myself that it's just reverse culture shock and I have gone through a major life change. <laughs> And the best way to get out of it is just to go through it and to feel those feelings, to recognize, you know, what's going on, how it's making me feel, and just keep moving forward one day after the other. And I know eventually I will definitely feel more at home living here in Texas. All right, guys, I hope this video has helped you. If you are a repatriate and maybe you're feeling the same way, 
Um, if you're an expat that's considering repatriating, I hope you've maybe learned some ways that it might manifest for you. Um, it is hard sometimes when you come home and it's just to be kind of mentally prepared for that. It's definitely not a reason not to go overseas as an expat at all. Um, it's just something to be aware of that when you do end your time overseas as an expat, you might experience some of these things as well. All right, guys, that's going to be it today. Be sure to go down below and hit that like button and also hit that red subscribe button. And I will be back next week with some more expat content. Bye, guys.